Hi, good morning, Wayne. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of College of Rockies and MSM, I would like to welcome you all to the MSM and COTR Agent E Summit live series for 2020. I'm Karishma Chaudhary, Manager Canada at Amscare Media. The College of Rockies offers a learning environment that matches its, its, uh, its spectacular campus in the Cotney Rocky Mountains, British Columbia. College of the Rockies constantly seeks to enhance the quality of learning experience through international opportunities for its students and graduates. COTR together with MSM are happy to have you all here for an hour of ultimate knowledge oriented session to help you boost your student recruitment practices. COTR works closely with the carefully selected and approved group of agent partners to achieve its goal of internationalization. Well, before we go to the exciting part, I would like to let you know that if you are having any question relating to COTR, please don't hesitate to drop it in Q&A section in your control panel. And if you're having any technical question, please drop it into the chat box. I know everyone is curious and interested to learn more about COTR, its program, its state of art facilities on campus, and of course, its welcoming local community. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Lee Ying Wayne, at, who is an international recruitment manager at COTR. Wayne, over to you. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this morning. It's actually evening in Canada, so I'm glad that we're here. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time, as Krishma mentioned, talking about College of the Rockies, um, some of the programs that we're offering, where we're located, and, and some of the work that uh, I'm hoping that we can do together as we move forward into the new uh, academic year. So that we're, we're going to have a brief introduction at first, and then we're going to move into more detail. So off we go. College of the Rockies um, is a public uh, college in British Columbia, Canada. Um, our motto, if you will, is think, do, become. Uh, we really do want all of our students to be able to think and do and become things that, that they are dreaming of, that their families are dreaming of, um, and perhaps even more. We're located in British Columbia. Um, we're actually located in a part of British Columbia that's on the transition between the province of BC and Alberta. And we're located right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains of Canada. So we definitely get all four seasons where we are. Um, we're the little red star near the border of BC and Alberta that you see there. And we're located in a city called Cranbrook. Cranbrook is a small Canadian city, um, probably very small by Indian standards. Um, but we have all the amenities that uh, larger centers have at the same time. So um, students are able to settle in, um, really enjoy their time at the college and, and have an opportunity to do things that they probably haven't thought of um, doing before. One of the benefits I, I think for, for students is that they're coming to a safe, and clean and modern city, but it also has a nice balance between school and work because a lot of students do come to Canada with the idea of getting some job experience, perhaps earning a little bit of money. And, and there are a lot of part-time job opportunities for students to, to earn uh, while they're studying at the college. As I mentioned, we're between Vancouver and Calgary. We're in fact a 90 minute airplane ride from Vancouver. We're only a 45 minute airplane ride from Calgary. Uh, so there are options for arrival. And I think one of the, the hidden characteristics of the area is our low cost of living. So, you know, families automatically think of Toronto or Vancouver or even Calgary. Um, but to live in those cities and to, to survive in those cities can be expensive. We have the luxury, I suppose, of, of being very affordable from that perspective. And so it gives students a nice kind of package where uh, they can study in a safe environment. They have part-time work. 
and it's affordable so they don't have to worry so much about the cost of that they would incur as, as they're studying at the college. I think you'll find that our campus is, is definitely modern. Um, we are, are chock full of instructors and staff who are encouraging and want students to do well. Um, the college, both faculty and staff are supportive of, of uh, students and their learning, uh, both inside as, as well as outside of the classroom. So as I mentioned a moment ago, we're, we're a public post-secondary institution. Um, we have over 35 different programs ranging from certificate level all the way up to a four-year degree program. Um, our most popular programs are by and large our, our diploma programs, which includes the postgraduate program. Um, as you may or may not know, students who come to Canada and finish a two-year diploma at a public institution like ours are basically on a fast track for immigration purposes. They qualify for a three-year postgraduate work permit. And that really goes a long way in, in helping them uh, with their goal of immigration. So some popular programs, and I'll touch this again uh, later, uh, things like University Arts and Sciences, uh, a suite of business programs, our hospitality program, tourism. Uh, we have an engineering program that students, if they're interested, can do and transfer to a, a university within the province or across Canada afterward. Speaking of transferring, we, we are in British Columbia and we are part of something called the BC Transfer Guide. And so every institution in Canada, sorry, in British Columbia, uh, knows and, and understands our courses and we know theirs just the same. So if a student said to me, Wayne, I, I really want to get to Simon Fraser, um, Simon Fraser knows exactly what courses the student will have done and gotten credit for at College of the Rockies and be able to take uh, those courses with them for credit and be in, a, in advanced standing at those institutions. So why choose us? Well, we are a smaller college and so that means that uh, we often have smaller class sizes. Uh, unlike some of the larger institutions where students are piled into a classroom with 100 other people, our average class size is between 24 and 30 students, um, which means that every student gets a lot of support from faculty and staff. Um, all of our classrooms are current with technology, whether it's smart boards, our, on our uh, learning platform, um, access for students on their devices, uh, the college, uh, while students are on campus has free Wi-Fi. And, and so there is technology all over the campus. Uh, the one thing that I think is important, especially in the world that we live in today, is the inclusion of technology. And so students have to be familiar with how to use a computer very well. And that is integral to their learning at the college. I talked a moment ago about the affordability of the college. So we have affordable fees and an economical cost of living. And I also mentioned that we have a range of programs from one-year certificates to the four-year degree. So every couple of years, we participate in uh, a survey that is polling students, international students around the world. Uh, there are a number of Canadian colleges which participate in the survey, Australian colleges, American colleges, European institutions, just the same. And year over year, College of the Rockies ranks number one in something. In fact, um, in the previous iteration of the survey, we ranked number one in the world. And we're pretty, very pleased to say that we rank number one again, not just in the world, but also in a number of really key categories. Things like good, teaching, good teachers and, and quality of instruction, uh, access to resources, whether it's virtual learning or our, our online library, the opportunity for students to work while they're studying, um, language and learning supports become really important. Um, my office and my team really goes out of our way to welcome students. So uh, whether it's from the pre-departure to their arrival to the orientation and then some, uh, we go out of our way to support our students. And we also realize the importance of the balance between, you know, studying and, and giving students an opportunity to interact with others, 
So we, we have a lot of activities on campus when we're there um, to bring students together, uh, meet with other students and, and really have a, a good time. Um, so it's, those kind of things really help us do well in, in our world ranking. So uh, we are number one in the world on a number of different things according to the survey and we're very proud of that. So let's look at our classrooms. We have uh, a number of classrooms. Um, I mentioned that our class sizes are typically small. Um, the photo that you see in the upper left-hand corner is probably one of our larger classrooms and it doesn't hold more than 40 or 50 students. Um, but by and large, the classes are small and, and uh, as I say, the average class size is 24 to 30 people. Uh, we have an online learning platform and our, our platform that we use is called Moodle. A lot of institutions also use Moodle and it, it's a very uh, good learning system to work from. We have a number of computer labs on campus um, which students can have access to if they wish. Coupled with that, uh, there's the balance of uh, fitness areas, uh, food services, so we have a cafeteria. and. Uh, I, I did mention our library earlier, but I, I think it's important to note that a lot of our instructors are moving to online resources for learning. And not just important for the time that we live in right now, but also from the affordability point of view. Because, as you may know, when you were a student, physical books cost money. Um, but a lot of the online resources that our, our instructors are using now um, are free of charge. Uh, through a provincial database. So uh, we are, a lot of our instructors are shifting towards the, that set of resources. Uh, I mentioned the Wi-Fi throughout the campus as well. And I, I talked a moment ago about some of the programs, but um, for the sake of our conversation today, I would like you to think about some key programs um, especially as I share some information later in the presentation. So um, I want you to make note of the associate programs, the Associate of Arts program, Associate of Science program. Uh, the new Associate of Science Environmental Sciences program is, is something that I want you to, to think about. Uh, the suite of business programs, whether it's the accounting major, uh, but more importantly, we have a new uh, two-year diploma in financial services that is an opportunity. Uh, general management for business programs and a marketing focus as well. Some of you may have worked with us in recruiting hospitality students in the past and we're moving into our third uh, cohort of students for hospitality which is really exciting for us. In fact our first group of hospitality students are set to graduate uh, this, this summer. Um, tourism is a popular program um, for your prospective students who may have a health focus, uh, we offer a program called kinesiology. Uh, kinesiology, if you're not familiar with, talks about body mechanics and how, how uh, people's bodies interact with and muscle groups and, and how to help people um, become stronger and fitter. Uh, and, and then we have a post-degree program, as I mentioned. Um, our post-degree program has a little bit of a different focus and perhaps a really contemporary focus because it looks at sustainable business practices. So a nice range of programs, but again, there are some key programs that I really want you to think about um, as we work through our discussion today. So I talked about affordability and I've said it over and over. Um, our fees for the coming academic year are $1,430 Canadian per course. Uh, interestingly enough, if a student registers in five academic courses, the college charges them $6,325. But, um, you know, 1430 times five is not 6325 We actually give students a bit of a discount if they take four and or five courses in their academic semester. It's not for everybody because everyone has individual needs in terms of learning, but for students who do take four courses or if they take five courses, we do give them a little bit of a break on their, on their fees. 
So that's something to be mindful of as, as you're talking to prospective students. And then we're moving to the admission requirements because um, I think this is going to become a really important piece as you're talking to your students. College of the Rockies looks at a comprehensive kind of package from a student. Uh, we look for a really quality set of transcripts, whether it's high school or post-secondary. But in terms of English language proficiency, our IELTS benchmark is a 6.0 overall with no band below six. So the, the, the GPA is, is moot because everyone should be at least 50% anyway. But sometimes students struggle with the demonstration of language prof proficiency. So we are looking for a six overall and no band below six. For all programs aside from our post degree program, because like a lot of post degree programs across Canada, we actually look for a little bit higher language proficiency in that. So we're looking for a 6.5 overall uh, for our post degree program with no band below six. Again, uh, those applicants should have a, a post-secondary credential already. And so for their cumulative GPA, all we're looking for is 50% um, uh, for that credential. I can tell you um, with those minimum uh, expectations for every program that we've gone through the admissions process uh, this past winter going into the spring and also coming into the fall um, the pool of applicants has far exceeded that 50 percent minimum um, which is which is a pleasant surprise for me because I was fully expecting to see students in the 50 60 percent world but honestly for the students who apply to the post degree program for September this year, the, the CP, CGPA for that group of students was closer to 68%, which is exceptional. So I'm very pleased to see that. Um, and, and so I, I really feel that we're getting really high quality students and applicants, and I, I'm really pleased by that. Well, we're all working through a different world right now. And, and so um, not too long ago, and, and perhaps it's still the case, a lot of the testing centers are closed. And so institutions have started to recognize some alternative um, tests of language proficiency, and we're no different. So we have made a decision as, the, as an institution to recognize the Duolingo, and we're looking for a minimum score of 110, which I don't think is unreasonable. But what I think is exceptional, and I, I, I know for a fact that we're the first college to do so in Canada, we're also recognizing the IELTS indicator, as well as the new TOEFL IBT special home edition. And those, those tests are more kind of reflective of what the scores should be, should a student have taken the face-to-face -face tests. So the results that we're looking for from those two uh, tests are no different than what we ask for for our, our um, typical face-to-face -face exams. So six for the IELTS, no band below six. Uh, for the applicants to the post-degree program, it's a 6.5 with no band below six. And as you can see on the screen, um, our TOEFL IBT score remains at 80 overall. And I've broken out the individual um, subscores there for you. So we are using these tests of language proficiency on a temporary basis. For now, um, we will respect them for the upcoming fall 2020 admission cycle. We'll also respect them for the winter 2021 admission cycle and even to next spring. So spring 2021, we will also recognize the Duolingo, the IELTS indicator and the TOEFL IBT special home edition. Who knows what happens after that? Um, my hope is that, that these tests are equally representative as the IELTS is, or the TOEFL is, or the Kale, or the Pearson. But the difference is the cost of the student is much more reasonable with the Duolingo or the indicator or the IBT at, at home. So there's a there's a there's a savings to the student there for sure. And I, I think it's worth consideration for um, students to take advantage of this while they can.
We have a few different um, accommodation options for students as they come to College of the Rockies. We certainly have a residence on campus. In fact, we, we are in the process of building five new residence buildings. Um, so we'll have a, a doubling of our residence capacity um, by 2021. So residence is an option for sure. Um, we also have a homestay program and um, we also have an opportunity for students to live together within the community and that's for the most part what a lot of our, our students from India tend to do is they, they meet others from um, you know perhaps the same area and they end up sharing an apartment or sharing a house with each other. Um, they get to cook together, they get to, to share the space together and they really you know share their time well together. So the three housing options for students but again, by and large, students um, tend to find a place and, and share with friends. So College of the Rockies, like a lot of other Canadian colleges this past year, has had a strong representation from India. Um, just over 26% of my students at College of the Rockies this past year were uh, international. 219 students were from India in the, this past year. Um, sorry, a year ago this winter, so winter 2019. Um, my India student numbers for this current, or for the winter semester that just finished, um, fell a bit, I think we're around 200 right now. So what's it like living at College of the Rockies and what's it like going through a program? Well, I'm gonna share with you a, a video production that was done um, about our hospitality students, so it's a, it's, profiling three students uh, who are going through our hospitality program in our regional campus in Invermere. Um, and I really want to share this with you because it's, it's such an endearing video for us. So I'll hit play on this and, and we'll watch it for a couple minutes. Every time they make it up there, but they never strike anything. I always think that they're hitting each other intentionally. <laughs> they just keep on pushing each other. Is that a go? No, it's not a goal. Studying abroad is a great way to see the world and experience a different way of life. And for these students from northern India, what better place to experience Canada than in the small mountain town of Invermere, British Columbia. Where I'm from, there is no mountain at all, so I haven't seen any mountain in my life. I only saw mountain in TV. The first glimpse, just coming down the hill we have, it was like so good that the lake and the whole town was so adorable. Ekam Noor Singh, Himat Jatana and Mohit Sharma first arrived in the Columbia Valley during the fall of 2018, just in time for winter. When I searched about the town and I have seen like it gets pretty cold in winter and my teachers were saying uh, it, you're gonna see snow, you're gonna see snow in just a few days and we were thinking like they are lying to us because there were no snow. up in the morning I just opened the window curtains and I saw that it's, it's snowing out so it was all white. We just ran literally ran out of the main door in our shots uh, to just to see the snow and feel the snow what, what actually snow feels like. I didn't have a car and so I, I walked through the, on the snow to came to the college and it was quite fun because uh, the snow is goes into my shoes and my my feet got wet. Our students were out in the field dancing and they were absolutely so happy they thought it was magical. Yeah, 
Nah, they just changed the sides. The Rockies came to this side and they the other team just went to that side. I knew about ice hockey because I was taught in school, but I was not uh, like I didn't get a chance back in India to see ice hockey. I used to see the uh, hockey, ice hockey game on the TV. When I I decided to watch them live, it's uh, very interesting to see how they they skate on the ice and how they play. First time I was confused at why they are like rushing so fast. <laughs> Why are they banging into each other? How do they skate and play hockey on the same time? Oh no! Yeah, it's true too. Just as the students have embraced Invermere, Invermere has embraced them. Our community has been given a gift of uh, a little bit more cultural diversity and sharing in some of their traditions. We've had over 130 uh, community members come to the Invermere campus to celebrate Diwali, which is one of their biggest uh, celebrations in the year. So it, it works both ways. Reflecting on their experience here so far, the trio says without question, they've enjoyed their time in Canada. I don't want to leave for like next maybe 10 to 15 years. I just want to stick to stick to this area. I want to stay in Invermere till my graduation and after that I I definitely stay for for some time. I'm learning a lot from Canada. I think that's totally life-changing moments for me. So just a really nice profile of, of our students in Invermere and, and uh, it, it's just great. Those, those three students are graduating this summer and they're part of our first cohort of students to, to get through the program. So we're, we're very proud of them. So what's next? So um, after we finish our discussion here, um, I'm suggesting that we do a bit of an application blitz. So um, what I'm offering to you as, as agents is the opportunity to uh, waive the application fee. Um, so for 48 hours, um, I have a fee waiver code on the screen in front of you. The code is COTR2020CA, and it's valid until the end of June um, 11th which is Thursday this week, uh, for you to submit an application through our application channel. And if you've never worked with um, us before, we use Education Planner BC. So contact the M Square folks and, and they can connect you with the appropriate link to the, to the website. The applications need to be complete using the student's information. And I realize that, that you're working with the students, but there are a series of steps along the way where we actually need to hear from the students, um, whether it's a yes or no, or, or answer questions, what have you. Um, part of our admissions process requires us to validate all their test scores as well. Um, but this gives you an opportunity to suggest to, to students that, that they can submit an application to College of the Rockies um, and not have to pay the application fee. So toward the end of the application on Education Planner BC, you will see um, where it asks to pay the application fee and you can indicate um, and definitely choose the radio button that says, I have an approved application fee waiver. And then in the waiver code box, be certain to enter COTR 2020 CA and that will waive the application fee for your students. So what are we doing this for? Um, earlier in, in the presentation, I talked about some of the associate programs, whether it's arts or science or the new environmental sciences program. Um, I'm looking for focus on the business programs, whether it's accounting, marketing, general management, what have you, but perhaps especially the financial services diploma program, which is brand new. Um, I'd like you to think about the tourism program because I have a little bit of space left in tourism. Uh, I definitely have space in our post-degree program. 
and I might have a little bit of space in the kinesiology program. And that's why I highlighted those programs in particular uh, during this presentation today. So COTR 2020 CA will waive the application fee for your students. The reason that we're doing this today is I understand and I know that a lot of students who are wanting to finish high school can't right now because they can't do their state or board exams because and not just in India but in a lot of countries where they have board exams those exams have been delayed because of COVID-19 but there's an opportunity here for us because if you have a student who has very good grade 10 board scores very good grade 11 school reported scores why wouldn't i take a chance on those students and this is really the, the motivation behind our, our discussion today i'm looking for students who are wanting to complete high school who have a very good academic history um, but also are looking for certainty that they need a place to study and i'm willing to give that to them if they've got that history behind them so good gpa um, well we can have a look at their their scores uh, we can certainly look at their board results once they have them but i'm not afraid to take them right now so let's find those students and um, we'll get them admitted so if you have questions definitely email the m square team uh, the email address is on your screen. Uh, any information about the college, you can certainly find on the college website, which is www.cotr.ca. Have a look at the programs. Again, I just highlighted a few of the key programs that I'd like you to focus on. But the, the website also gives you up-to-date information about what's happening in the fall semester, especially with um, the pandemic and as we come out of uh, the pandemic. I can tell you that the fall semester will begin in an online format. Um, our goal is to um, be face to face as soon as we can. But at this point, uh, the, the academic courses and programs uh, for September will begin online. So I want to take a moment to thank you for your help and your work in, in recruiting for College of the Rockies. And, and at this point, I'd be Glad to answer questions. Hello, Wayne. Thank you so much for the presentation. Yes, it's a time now to take questions from our audience. I would to remind everyone, if you're having any question, don't hesitate to put it in Q&A section of your control panel. So, uh, Wayne, uh, coming to the first question, uh, are we offering any, uh, you know, you have talked about the scholarship. Can you brief more about it, how much scholarship student would be getting if he would be taking four to five courses? So it's not so much of a scholarship per se. Um, we, we discount their um, tuition for that semester based on the number of courses that they take. Um, if a student is taking three courses, for example, they, they pay three times the 1,430. But as they register into four courses, then they get a little bit of a discount. And again, a larger discount if they go into five courses. It, it, it's a nice incentive, but I want, I want students and parents to be assured that as students prepare for their study in Canada, I don't want them to focus purely on, oh, if I take five courses, I get, a, I get to save more money. Five courses isn't for everybody. And, and so, you know, as a student, quite often, I only took four courses in a semester and not because it was a discount or anything, but because it was the right balance for me. You know, there, there's so many different things that that young learners have to work through. And, and so uh, the, the discount is, is an incentive on, on one hand, but it, it shouldn't be the only choices as, as to why students registered four or five courses. Uh, thank you, Wayne. And Wayne, regarding the September intake, uh, is COTR, uh, you know, um, planning to go for the online classes? Yes. So as I mentioned, our fall semester will begin uh, completely online. Um, coming out of this past winter semester, everyone was scrambling to finish the winter semester in an online format or a blended format. 
Um, we now have the benefit of the summer to get really prepared to deliver all of our courses online in September, and we will do so. Um, our intention is not to be online forever. Um, our hope is to, to come back to a face-to-face -face environment when either the ministry allows us or our governments allow us. Um, but at this point in time, we will be starting online. Okay. So the first semester will be completely online, even if the international flights, you know, uh, the restriction, uh, restriction on the international flights get lifted. Right. Okay, thank you. And uh, Wayne, what is the current turn around time for the offer letters? Uh, I've turned around offer letters within th uh, two or three days for one student. Um, it, uh, I'll tell you, uh, our admissions process is very, very simple. We have six steps. And as long as the, the student is uh, responding to each step um, in a reasonable amount of time, they will get their their LOA. Um, our our job is not to slow down the process. Our job is to to support students and get through the process. The the biggest, I suppose, hurdle for everyone to get past right now isn't so much the time to get the LOA. It's more so the time to get into the study permit process. Okay. Thank you, Wayne. And uh, Wayne, uh, are we uh, offering conditional offer later if the student uh, is not having IELTS, English proficiency test as of now? Um, I, I think that we've given lots of opportunities for students to get tested um, using either Duolingo, the IELTS indicator, or the TOEFL special at home edition. Um, I, I think that there's it's to the student's advantage to take one of those tests rather than ask for a conditional admit because they, they probably won't have a lot of success going down that path. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm, uh, I can see a lot of questions regarding the gap and the backlog. So I would like to answer this question. If the student uh, has done, you know, 12th grade, so we will be accepting maximum of two years gap. And if the student has done, you know, graduation, so we will be accepting gap up to, you know, five to six years. Regarding the backlogs, uh, if the student has done graduation, three years of uh, program, then we will be accepting backlogs up to five. And if the student has done four years of program, then we, we would be accepting backlogs up to eight. So uh, next question uh, for you, uh, Wayne, uh, is homestay also cheaper than rest of, of the BC and Ontario here in, you know, in the region of COTR? I think our homestay is definitely more affordable. I, it goes hand in hand with where we live. Um, I'll tell you one of my hesitations with homestay, especially for uh, a lot of our students from India is um, a lot of our homestay families aren't familiar with vegetarian diets. And, and so if your student or prospective student is a vegetarian, I, I definitely want to hear from them because um, homestay could be an option. I just want the student to be aware of, of what some of the challenges may be if they went down that path. Uh, I, I'm not discounting it whatsoever. I just want everyone to be aware or, or really understand um, that, that that has been an issue for us in the past with, with some students who are vegetarian, others it hasn't. So uh, we, we just want to hear from you. Right. Okay. So uh, Wayne, uh, because now uh, for the online classes, I can see even now a few agents are confused with the, you know, eligibility. So to uh, get enrolled for the uh, September intake online classes, do students need to have a valid visa approval letter? Uh, the short answer is yes. If their goal is to uh, finish the credential, uh, so for example, they're applying for a diploma program and then they, they really want to graduate with the diploma. And further to that, if they want to apply for a postgraduate work permit, then yes, they, they do need to have the study permit in hand. 
Um, the, the, the question is, is interesting because any student can register for a course at College of the Rockies, whether they have a study permit or not. But if the goal of the student is, I want a, a diploma, I want to eventually immigrate to Canada, they absolutely need that study permit because the courses that they take without a study permit won't be recognized by, by Canada immigration. And they would basically have to retake the course for credit again. Okay, so I would like to clarify if just imagine if student does not uh, get the, uh, you know, uh, uh, visa, as you said that uh, they can get registered at CODR. So yeah. if they have not uh, get approval by the, uh, you know, a program start date, and later on, they get it still they can uh, be registered in the program. They, they can register for sure. A, a, Providing their space because they, they would choose the, they would give the seat in the class to a student who has a study permit, who is registered um, at the college. But if the student is taking the course, I mean, we have some students who take the course just out of interest. Um, they have no intention of coming to Canada. They just, peer, they just want to study that course. And so if there's space in the course, they can certainly take it. Um, but if they don't get their study permit in time and they still want to take the course, they're better to defer until January rather than trying to um, continue with, with studying the course because they may pass it uh, without the study permit. But once they get to Canada and they say, well, I really want to apply for a postgrad work permit afterward and they want to complete the program, they would have to retake it. Okay. Uh, and when would you like to say something about the uh, current scenario in Canada? Uh, if just imagine the uh, restrictions on the airlines lifted and, uh, you know, student wish to come to Canada, uh, you know, uh, for the September intake also. So do they need to get into the, you know, quarantine or what kind of preparations they need to have? So the Canadian government has a fairly long list of, of requirements for any international traveler. Um, what, there's a couple of requirements that students need to be aware of. So they have to have their, their study permit and, and their LOA with them. Yeah. They need to book their travel, but in anticipation of coming to Canada, they have to develop a self-isolation plan. And that self-isolation plan has to detail every aspect of how they will self-isolate upon arrival in Canada. The current requirement in Canada is for new um, people coming from other countries, whether it's students or travelers, to self-isolate for a period of 14 days. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why they require the self-isolation plan, because the plan has to say, where will they self-isolate? How will they acquire their food? How will they survive for those 14 days? And students have to remember that if they're required to self-isolate in a hotel, for example, it can get quite costly. Um, the, the penalty, I have to say, <laughs> the penalty for not adhering to the Quarantine Act, I think it's called, in Canada, is very severe. I have never seen anything like it before. Um, people can be personally liable for up to $750,000 and time in prison if they don't adhere to the, the rules. So it's a fairly penal kind of system right now where if you don't follow the, the expectations and the guidelines, it could lead to a really big mess for somebody. So I, I guess the short answer is, as we work through the admissions process with a student and their agent, um, we will also work with you in, in guiding you to the right um, sources of information prior to travel because things are changing so quickly right now. Um, even, even a month ago, they were different here. And so I think as we move through the summer and through the admissions process, things will change again. And, and my office and my team is, is here to, to work with you in, in ensuring that your students have the, the best and correct information possible. Right. Uh, thank you, Wayne. Um, 
Vain, uh, I just want to know, uh, is there, any, uh, do we are having any program which are providing, you know, assured placement to the students? Provide what, sorry? Placements to the uh, students, job placements. Oh, job placements. So, um, the hospitality program, for example, has a co-op component. The new financial services diploma program that I mentioned also has a co-op component. Mm -hmm. Now they're a little bit different because the co-op program for the hospitality um, program is a paid co-op. The co-op component for the financial services uh, diploma program at this point is not paid, mm -hmm. um, but the larger benefit for either is getting that work experience and, and getting in front of an employer or prospective employer. Mm -hmm. um, job placement in, in Canada for, for colleges is a little bit different um, and, and that's why co-op tends to work better mm -hmm. because it gives employers or prospective employers a real opportunity to see how a, a young person works or will work. Mm -hmm. and, and being where we are in a smaller Canadian city like ours, quite often students will get um, referred to other employers because you know they may have done a co-op placement at this one place and then you know that that employer may not have a job opening right now but they know that someone else is looking for someone so they might pick up the telephone and say hey just had this student i don't have a job for him right now but can you use him or her and students quite often get jobs through that word of mouth um, path rather than than applying directly to job ads and whatnot so that quite often works better than a job placement. Right, right, please. And uh, when uh, uh, during this COVID situation, COVID phase, uh, students, most of the students are afraid, uh, you know, to join any university of, or the college. So the uh, few agent wants to know what is the, you know, positive aspects they can, you know, uh, tell to the students to apply right now during COVID in COTR. Well, I think the province of British Columbia, um, compared to the other Canadian provinces, has one of the lower rates of COVID-19. Um, within each province, we're, we're divided into what we call health regions. And so Vancouver itself has a health region, for example. Uh, Cranbrook is part of a different health region again. Um, in, our particular health region <clears throat> has had very few cases of COVID-19. In fact, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing right now, most of the cases of COVID-19 within our health region um, were not in Cranbrook. They were in other areas within the health region. So the, the number of incidents of COVID-19 within our immediate city center has been very low. Um, it doesn't mean that we're taking that lightly. We, we still are probably very conservative in how we are approaching the reopening of the college in terms of face-to-face -face classes. Um, and that's why our fall semester, we, we were very early on saying, oh, we're going to start online. And so my, my hope is as new students travel from home, to Cranbrook that they actually spend little time in Vancouver because Vancouver has many more cases than, than our overall health region on its own. So my hope is that they transition through Vancouver quickly and get to Cranbrook. They can self-isolate in Cranbrook and not have less concern about being exposed to the coronavirus compared to having to self-isolate in Vancouver, for example. Mm -hmm. The other option I would suggest that some people might consider if, if they want and are able to come to Canada early is to stay with friends or family in Canada somewhere um, for the 14 days before coming to Cranbrook. Because currently there isn't any restriction from traveling within Canada. So if, if um, a student has a family in, um, I don't know, Ottawa, for example, they can go spend a couple of weeks with their family in Ottawa before coming to Cranbrook. 
and then they've met their self-isolation requirement. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, even uh, I believe at current time, you know, although the students are, you know, um, not having the uh, exact idea what going to happen, uh, but this is a right time for those students who want to apply for study abroad uh, to proceed with it because uh, even if they are having the online classes, it's better uh, as early they start their program, as early they would be able to finish it. Another thing they would be getting, you know, even if they are having the online classes, they will be getting the postgraduate work permit that won't be affected by this. And if they are starting their, you know, program from their home country, so somewhere it is also helpful financially also because the expenses will be less. Because if they travel to Canada, they have to make arrangements to get quarantine, you know, at, the, at this particular time also. So, and staying in a hotel or somewhere that can be expensive. So, uh, this is something also you can tell to your students that if they want to really study abroad, they, uh, they can start right now uh, from the September intake only. So, they would be able to start their program early. They would be able to finish it early. Their postgraduate work permit won't be affected. And it will be somewhere financially, you know, inexpensive also as compared to the other option. I think you've said a couple of really important things there because you're absolutely right. The sooner you start, the sooner you finish, for sure. You also touched on the importance of being able to stay at home and begin your program. I, I think based on my experience working with a lot of international students the first semester if not the first year is terribly challenging for a lot of students not because they don't know how to study they've never lived abroad before. and so you know learning to cook for themselves figuring out how to buy groceries how do i do this winter you know that a lot of things that young people have to figure out outside of actual studying that sets them back but if they're able to start their program from home have the comfort of their parents nearby good food um, not to say that our food is bad but comfortable that, that they're familiar with um, and then they can make the transition after they've got some courses and credit under their belt uh, i think for a lot of students it's to their benefit mm -hmm. Right. And uh, when um, coming to our next question now, um, do we accept university credit transfer from, from any of the rec recognized university in Bangladesh? So we are having this question from the Bangladesh agents. Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. We, we look at transfer credit on a case by case basis. There's a process that students who have a credential behind them or have some university study behind them to go through in order to determine whether they they can get um, an exemption from a course or advanced credit on on a course based on their study experience. So um, the short answer is maybe uh, we would have to look at the institution. There's going to be some homework required by the student to get the course overviews and and whatnot in place. Um, but honestly, it, it, it's not impossible. Um, and if you have a student who's coming from that kind of scenario, I would absolutely encourage them to, to try to get some advanced credit. Oh, right. And I'm having a very interesting question, uh, Wayne, regarding the, uh, you know, onshore students. Just imagine a student has done one year of, you know, um, education from any of the, you know, university or college in Canada and his IELTS or you know English uh, proficiency test whatever he's having is expired so with that expired uh, you know uh, you know um, IELTS proficiency test and his one year transcripts would he able to you know apply to COTR they can definitely apply our English language proficiency policy describes a number of different scenarios on how we recognize proficiency. For new students coming from their home countries directly out of high school is, is certainly the, the most, I suppose, common scenario. But there's other scenarios. For example, there's a lot of international schools that teach primary, primarily in English. And so that, that puts those students in a bit of a different bucket again for their proficiency. Okay. Students who study in Canada and want to change institutions. Again, different bucket. 
And, and so we, we really look at each student's application individually to determine the best way for them to demonstrate the different aspects of the application process, not just proficiency, but course requirements and so on. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at that on an individual basis. There, there's, there's, you know, one brush doesn't paint the picture for everyone, for sure. Right. Uh, so here um, we, I'm getting a few questions which we have already covered, uh, but I would like to answer them very quickly. So regarding the online classes, we will be starting this uh, fall intake in September, in the month of September only. And uh, we are having discount on the fee that depends upon the, if the student take four to five courses, then we would be able to give them some discount on the fees. But other than that, we are not having a specific a discount because we are having a online classes for September on the basis of that we are not uh, providing any kind of discount in the tuition fee and yes student would be able uh, would be eligible for the postgraduate work permit even if he you know started his uh, online program in September intake so these were the few questions which were coming up again and again so, uh, Wayne, is there any kind of support student would be getting, you know, if they are traveling to Canada at this particular, you know, time? What kind of supports UTR would be providing to the student at this kind of time? So our, 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 what we normally do is we want to hear from the student as early as possible about their travel plans. So when are they leaving? When might they arrive in Canada? Where are they staying? Because we have opportunity for students to be met at the airport from my team uh, to be taken to wherever they're staying. That's normal. Um, I, I think the website provides a lot of current and up-to-date information about how the college is responding to COVID-19 because it does change so quickly. Um, all of the support mechanisms that we've had in place in terms of uh, how we normally interact with students face to face have shifted into an online format. So students are still in contact with us, whether it's by um, email or through a chat or even by a telephone. So that hasn't changed. It's only how we've delivered it. Um, so we, we've been in touch with every single one of our current students. We've called them all. We've emailed them all more than once. And so we know exactly where they are, what they're doing what challenges they may be facing. Um, and we continue to work with them. And that's no different with our, our new students. Uh, we, we continue through that process just the same. Uh, and we will, we will continue to do that. Right. And Wayne, uh, if you can answer this question right now, that how many days of class students uh, are having in a week? Normally five. So our classes run Monday through Friday. Um, we don't normally teach Saturday and Sunday. So students who have part-time work often work um, on Saturdays and Sundays or in the evenings. Um, but our, our normal instruction goes from Monday to Friday. And generally, how many hours of class are uh, this if the if any program is having the class for all the five days? So generally, what is the length of the class? So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they can plan for an hour uh, for a class block. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are 90 minutes for a class block. So it depends on, on how many instructional blocks get scheduled for each class. Um, I, I miss being a student. It's, it's, it's a nice life. <laughs> it's not hard. Right, way. So, Avin, uh, I believe we are uh, able to answer a lot of questions from the uh, from our audience. Um, but yes, there might be few questions which we are not able to cover up right now because of the restriction of the time. Uh, we will be contacting back to uh, all of our agents who are still having questions. We have also shared with you our contact details contact numbers so you can definitely reach out uh, to our admission and support executive Neetu and our marketing manager Sunny. So uh, Wayne, do you have anything else to say before we wrap up? Uh, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to, to, to sit with me and, and go through this, this presentation. I, I hope that the 48-hour uh, blitz uh, with no application fee goes a long way and, and helps you in your recruitment with students. 
um, we, we, we don't look for a ton of students. We look for a, a, a group of really good ones. And so um, through this process, it's, it's a little bit new for me, just the same, but I'm willing to do it. And I know that there's some really good students out there who are still looking for a place to study. And, and because of the opportunity with delayed exams, um, the, the time is, is perfect for that. Right. And one more thing we are going to do is we are having your email addresses. So we will be sending you with the program matrix with the status of the program, which are still open for September intake. So you will get an idea also with the eligibility criteria for each and every program. So stay connected with your email ID. Keep on checking. We will uh, send the all detail shortly. And uh, also, I would like to thank you all for participating in this exclusive MSM and COTR agency summit. We appreciate that you being here. We hope this session was helpful and informative enough for everyone. So until the next one, please take care of yourself. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye. Thank you.